If you're hearing that bell, then what you're listening to is the monastery of Saint Michel or Saint Michael's in Tel Aviv, Yafo, Israel, which tells you that you're seeing another special edition of Black Man Spy. It should be no surprise that I'm in Israel. I'd been planning to come here for the last three months, but the timing had to be right. It was really important that, one, I make it so that I could explain the entire process of what's going on in the Middle East in an easily understandable way for audiences that are very, very highly confused. Two, I wanted to make sure that the regional characteristics of what's happening here between Yemen Lebanon, Iraq, Iran, were all sort of stable. But of course, as soon as I arrived, as is the way that uh, things go in my world, but, uh, Southern Lebanon launches dozens of rockets into Israel, including anti-tank missiles, which killed some civilians. And now Israel is carrying out retaliatory airstrikes against Lebanon. But here in Tel Aviv, or where I'm standing, the old fishing village of Yahoo, uh, a place which I came to 30 years ago, has been completely transformed into a modern, advanced country, which Israel always was. However, the way that the American people and many people on social media get their information is that they just hear in 10 or 15 second snippets what they think people want to teach them. And whether it's balanced or not, is not important. For me, it's very important that you get an extremely balanced view of what is going on in the Israel-Hamas war. So over the next month, I'm going to be reporting to you in writing and video and creating a documentary, which is going to give you small snippets of highly important historical information which will actually teach you what is truly happening in the Middle East, not just some TikTok blurb uh, or clip and commentary that other people seem content to do. I'm gonna be working here with Gary Kasparov's Renewing Democracy Initiative. And they, the RDI, have linked Israel and Ukraine together as two key points in the world's democratic order, which are now under stress. Even as I'm speaking, United States and European allies, armed forces are under fire in Yemen. And we are carrying out retaliatory strikes. People need to understand where did this come from? How did it start? We're gonna explain that too. So I'll be traveling around the Middle East and you'll be getting the benefit of this knowledge and you will be a smarter listener, reader, and certainly a subscriber. The black man spy. So the purpose of this reporting is going to be very simple. I'm going to explain to you over a period of time a very complex subject, which is the entire history of Israel, the Middle East, and Palestinian crisis. Now, those are two entirely separate things. Israel has been around for millennia. There are many people who try to say that it only started in 1948. No, the state of Israel, the modern state of Israel, started in 1948. But the people of Israel, the Jewish kingdoms, have been around for no less than three millennia. So this has always been the land of the Jews, even though Rome itself, after the time of Jesus Christ, as a punishment for the First Judean War in 67 AD, 30 years after Jesus Christ died, changed the area's name to Palestina, which was supposed to be a punishment to change it away from Judea, its original name for centuries. One of the most contentious parts of the debate is that there's a lot of disinformation and really stunningly ignorant history out there. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give you a quick overview past the period of antiquity of just who has exactly been on this land and why some people take claim to it, even though there is just no evidence of that fact. 
One of the arguments that I hear from the pro-Palestinian crowd is, is that this area has always been Muslim. Well, as we saw early on, the Jews have been living consistently on the land, that's Judea and Samaria, uh, also known as Judea and the Kingdom of Israel, for about 3,000 years. The 12 tribes of Israel that came out of the Canaanites have been around for 2,000 years before that. So about 5,000 years of continuous occupation by the people who are native and indigenous to this land. The indigenous language that has always been there for 3,000 years is Hebrew. The indigenous religion that has always been there has been Judaism. Yes, they have been occupied since that time. Before the Romans came, it was the Persians, then it was the Greeks, then it was the Hashemonian Empire, finally the Roman Empire occupied what they called the province of Judea 100 years before the birth of Christ. Jesus Christ himself, which some people have claimed was a Palestinian, was a Jewish rabbi. He preceded Christianity. It was his philosophy fundamentally from the Torah and the writing, which we call the writings of the Old Testament, that created the basis of Christianity, as I said earlier. Every religion sort of stacks on top of itself. And Jesus Christ, when Islam came, was considered the holiest and most powerful of the prophets before the prophet Muhammad. But the Romans occupied what they called the province of Judea, who had a very significant situation in the Roman Empire in that Judea, under King Herod I and then his son Herod II, were actually citizens of Rome, unlike Gaul and Germanicus, and what would be uh, modern England, they were not provinces of Rome. They were just occupied territories. Anyone who lived in Judea, the Jews were citizens of Rome. At the time of Jesus Christ's crucifixion, the Roman Empire and the Jews of that period had a contentious life. The Jews did not like the Roman occupation. And in 67 AD, the first Judean war, so the real war would break out between Rome and the Jews as documented by Josephus, a Jewish rabbi who was also a combat commander, but historian who was captured by the Romans and wrote the book, The Judean War, about how Rome suppressed and eventually wiped out the Jewish rebellion in 67 AD. But from that time, Rome, even though it occupied Judea, itself would fall to what the Byzantine Empire, or what we also know as the Holy Roman Empire, whose capital was Constantinople, which is modern day Istanbul. The Byzantines would fall to the Umayyad Empire, which was the beginning of the Islamic conquest. These were the Muslims who were the followers of the Prophet Muhammad, who established Islam in 632 AD, who conquered lands going all the way up to the east, through the Arabian Peninsula, through the Levantine to what's now modern Turkey, crossing that into northern Greece, Romania, Bulgaria, and as far north as Hungary and Austria. Those were the conquests of the Muslims to the east, and then the Muslims spanned all the way across North Africa to the west and occupied Spain from 711 until 1492. So those empires, the Umayyad, the Abbasids, the Fatimids, uh, maintained control of what was before Judea, Samaria, or the kingdoms of Israel for centuries and centuries until the Middle Ages period when the European Christians carried out multiple crusades and essentially came in, fought wars, seized the Levant, if you want to call it, uh, which is all of Western Syria, what is now modern Lebanon, and what is now modern Israel. The Crusaders were then defeated by the Mamluks, which was another Islamic empire, to be followed up by the Ottomans, who held that terrain for over 400 years until their defeat by the British and the Allies at the end of World War I. Now, key to the defeat of the Ottomans in this part of the world was a young British Arabic speaking officer by the name of T.E. Lawrence, known as Lawrence of Arabia. He came up with what the British thought would be an impossible feat 
of aligning all the Arab tribes of Saudi, what is now modern Saudi Arabia, together and aligning them into a combat force that would go up Western Saudi Arabia into what is now modern Jordan and defeat the Ottoman armies and seize all of the Ottoman Empire's assets as far north as Lebanon. That includes what's now modern Israel, modern Jordan. T.E. Lawrence successfully brought the Arab forces together under a combined Bedouin force and defeated the Ottomans. And that helped contribute to the end of World War I. At the end of World War I, the Ottoman Empire lost all of these lands. They lost virtually everything that they held. The British took over what is now, you know, from the river to the sea, right? From the Mediterranean Sea, going to the Jordan River, and then deep inside to the east in what we now call Jordan, at that time was called Transjordan. The British Mandate, as it was called, was called the Mandate of Palestine. The reason that they used the word Palestine was that they had reached back into Roman antiquity and taken the name Palestina and brought that up into the 1920s to identify the Transjordan Palestine area, which they also called the historic land of the Jews, which it was the historic land of the Jews. Anyone who lived there, whether they were Jewish, whether they were Jewish who were indigenous to the land or Jews who came as part of Theodore Herzl's return to Israel movement were called Palestinians, whether you were Arab, whether you were Jew, because you were under the control of the British Empire that called it the Palestine Mandate. And that's how Golda Meir, former Prime Minister of Israel, uh, born in Kiev, uh, Ukraine, uh, who emigrated to the United States and then came back as a child into Israel, has a passport that called her a Palestinian. But the modern term of Palestinian representing the Arabs of that area came not until the 1960s when Yasser Arafat, the leader of the Palestinian Liberation Organization, a man who was actually born in Syria, raised in Kuwait, created a terrorist organization for the return of the Arabs who lived in the Palestine Mandate, who left in the 1948 war. He called his people who left the country in 48 Palestinians. And that's how we get to where we are today. All right. That's it for this episode of Black Man Spy. Stay tuned for our next segment, which we'll be going to the city of Jerusalem. Then we're going to be going to northern Israel to discuss the potential coming of a Israel-Hezbollah war in Lebanon. And then finally, we're going to be doing a deep dive on the massacre from the Israel-Gaza border in one of the kibbutzim uh, where the massacres occurred. So. Be sure to subscribe to YouTube and take a subscription to Malcolm Nance at Substack.com. And we will see you on the next episode of Black Man's Five.